before we look ahead to the game, Sean, just uh, wanted to get your thoughts on the football governance bill, whether you feel it's needed, what are you, is your overall impression? I think at the moment we're waiting on more news, um, what possibly might come out of it, um, and then I think the, the whole of football will take a view, and certainly the club will, I would imagine. Bit of housekeeping, have you spoken to the prospective new owners yet? Nope, uh, I keep getting asked, but nope. Uh, that hasn't changed since last week, the week before that, and the week before that, and the week before that. We will talk about football then now. Okay. Uh, where we at as regards potentially getting players back? I'm thinking Brozier, Chimiti, we've got a timeline on them at the moment. Is Branthwaite ready to return? I take it Lindstrom's back from illness. Yep. Uh, James Garner, OK? Jimmy Garner waiting on more news. Um, just a specialist view um, on a back injury, so wait on that. Uh, Brozier is getting on the edge of coming into training. He's doing loads of work with the sports science team, but not yet. Um, Soft start for him and then and see where that goes, but hopeful that that will continue because he's making good progress. Jimmy's making progress, but obviously it's a, a very strange injury, uh, which I just, you know, I mentioned about the tendon coming off the, the sort of big toe. Very odd injury, uh, but he is beginning to make progress, but he's still a, a number of weeks away, that's for sure. You've got a timeline on, on Tim Ravinum as well? Uh, well, looking at weeks, certainly weeks, um, because of the, the type of injury it is to a bony injury, obviously. So we've just got to wait for it. Certainly still in a boot, uh, boot at the moment. They don't tend to use cast now. You know, it's an actual sort of boot that protects it. Just waiting on that to heal and then and then get back to training. But, excuse me, but it is going to be um, a number of weeks still yet. And I wanted to ask about Delhi just because we saw excuse him me. in the boot room before we spoke to you a little bit earlier on. He seemed very smiley. So where's he at? The yeah, moment? yeah, he's, he's just getting back on the grass again. So building up again um, from a... You know, another minor sort of uh, injury, but unfortunately it cost him a bit more time and he's just getting on with trying to get fit. Obviously, it's four games unbeat now. First away win since December, back-to-back -back clean sheets as well. Is the next step back-to-back -back wins? Well, you certainly want to do that. Um, you know, Fulham have shown themselves more, more than capable, but we're, we've suddenly found ourselves in a better um, position, not only in the league, but I mean the way that we're going about things. People getting fit, um, truly fit, um, Premier League fit, as I talk, uh, talk about. And I think that sharpness is coming with certain performers. And we've, and we, I think we've done well over the last four games, um, played better in some than others, but found a way to get results. So what kind of a test do, do Fulham represent? Well, I think they've done well, very well under uh, um, Marco, and you know they've they've collected a group of players. They've spent money, but they've, it seems to me they've spent wisely on the most part. Um, certainly from the outside looking in, um, and I think they've got a style where they 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 can progress. They want to be progressive. They want to take on the opposition. Um, also, they can have flat days when it goes against them. So we've got to make sure that we impact the game in that manner. You know, to make them have a flat day, not just wait for it um, and we perform. Does it come into the thinking just finally that it? you can go level on points with them? It doesn't really come into the thinking. I think it should probably just change some of the storylines, you know, from early season, which, you know, valid we didn't we didn't win games. And then, you know, you get sort of eight points out of four games and everyone looks at it slightly differently. So I think it just changes the story and gives it a more positive feel. Um, we wouldn't do it just for that reason, quite obviously, but I think it's helpful if there's a bit more positivity around what goes on at Everton. Um, and that's what we're trying to do off the pitch is bring that positive feel, but on the pitch we've got to do that with uh, getting continued results. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Vinny. We'll go to Ian at the Premier League. Thank you. Hi, Sean. Um, how much better does everyone feel for this run of results that you've had? How much more confidence is Yeah, there? I think, you know, I spoke about it a lot since I got here. There seems to always be that cloud waiting around Everton Football Club on or off the pitch. And I think we've had really strong spells of pushing it all away and then, and then it's come back our way. And I think all it does is give a better feel to everything and everyone. You know, uh, me included, of course. You know, I'm, I've got to guide it all. You know, and it's um, and it and it hurts. You know, it feels it, it's it's a it's a real knock when you're not winning games. Um, but that what builds your resilience. You know, and, and to sit here and do what I do, um, and I've had to build that over the years. And the players have had to build that as well. And I think we're showing signs of coming through it. Like I said, we're not the real. It's never a, a given that we're we're ready for uh, taking on the world. But I think we're showing that we're once again a capable outfit and we can win games in the Premier League. For the attacking players in particular, what difference does confidence make to them and your day-to-day -day job in, in preparing them for the matches? Well, questions have been asked at both ends of the pitch early season um, and we're, we're, we're correcting somewhat, you know, with a couple of clean sheets and scoring goals. Um, and especially, you know, you're getting goals from other parts of the pitch, I think is helpful as well. You know, I've always said it's not just um, strikers. We appreciate we want them to score, but it's not just them. Um, yeah, and I think 
I don't think we're overanalyzing it at the minute. You know, the, the players feel feel in the right place. The training was good again today. I mentioned it. The feel of the group, um, fitness helps. You know, players coming back to full fitness. And you know, with all due respect to the younger players, it's not the same as when you look around as a as a first team player and you see all the depth when it is there. We haven't got a huge squad, but the depth when everyone's fit. And then everyone, that competitive element. So I think all of them things go into it. But there's certainly a good feel around the group at the moment. I know you've talked a little bit already about why it's <laughs> playing me. in this number 10 role, but just how much difference is it making to the way that you approach matches, having him in that role and the way that he seems to be thriving doing it as well? Yeah, it's something that we played around with at my previous club at Burnley. And then when I got here, he was doing such a good job wide. Just a different way of giving a technical approach. We couldn't find as many goals early season, what we were hoping for. Duke's done a great job in there and currently doing a good job slightly deeper. Um, Illy's come in and, and, and done really well on the left, which frees that role up a little bit. So, yeah, I mean, he's, he's enjoying it, I think. I think there's still a lot for him to learn, particularly on the defensive side of the game. But in attack, we know he can score. We know he can set, set goals up. Um, he's shown that and, he, and he's got a, a very strong left foot. So if we get him in the right areas, it's fair to say I think he'll score more goals. Like you say, he had done it at Burnley previously, not not so much here. What, what is it about his his qualities that mean he's suited to playing this role for you? Well, he's still finding his way somewhat, um, but I think he, he, he's very technical. He can carry the ball, um, you know, out of tight areas, and he can find a pass. And of course, assisting, you know, and finding goals as well. But if you've got that technical quality and you can find them pockets to play in, he's he's full of energy. He can break the back lines. He's he's definitely quicker than people think. And you know he could he could grow into that role, and like I say, we'd we'd always looked at it. We looked at it last season. We looked at it when I first got here. But finding the right role for the team, don't forget, it's not just about him as a player. What what can the team or what does the team need? And they've been doing such a strong job for us in the wide areas that we had to rely on in there. This season, we felt we needed a change, a bit different feel, and spoke with the staff about it, spoke with the player about it. But like I say, he's still learning in that role. But I think he's showing good signs that he can develop that role, and and still. As last week, he has to adjust and go back wide when we need him to do that as well. Historically, is it something that Dwight's asked to do or is it something that you and your coaching staff have, have dictated? No, I think, I think like I say, we, we played it a long time ago, actually, when he was younger at, at Burnley a, a few times. And I remember particularly once away at Palace, I think it was in the pandemic, he did very well playing in that role. We'd looked at it here a couple of times and shifted it during games. And I just thought we, we just felt it was time for a change. It give, sometimes it gives the team a different dynamic. You know, when you just move one player, it can have a big, big effect on the rest of the team. Um, and I think he's enjoying the, the challenge of what it is. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Sam. Hi, Sean. A uh, couple of players that have been sort of questioned on social media have been Michael Keane and Ashley Young. How impressed? Have you been with them the last few years? I've been impressed not about me in question. I've been impressed with them since I've known them. I've known them both a long time. Young, he made his debut with me um, many moons ago at Watford. Um, and Keno obviously was a young player or younger player when I was at Burnley with him and I signed him there. So I don't need to worry about that side of things. That's just modern society, modern life. I don't think it's ideal for players, but there it is. That's the way it goes. Um, I think their professionalism has, has been outstanding through through ever since I've been at the club and I bought obviously Young in. Um, you know, they just continue to get out there, play, play hard, work hard, train hard, all the things you'd want from, from proper professionals, and they certainly are proper professionals. What, what does it say about Ashley Young's professionalism and keeping in shape that he can still do it? Yeah, I mean, he, he, you know, look, you, you can't keep doing it without the edge, and he's certainly still got that competitive edge. You know, it's, that's the biggest thing you look for as a manager. Nowadays, these players, they're super fit. They look after themselves, you know, beyond belief. and. And I think they've got that competitive edge and that competitive spirit. I think that's the truth of it. And I spoke to him in the summer. He could have easily, you know, he's 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 not short of wealth and all that sort of stuff. He could have easily walked away. Uh, but he said, no, no, I, I feel like I've got that edge. I still want to play. Um, and I said, yeah, OK. So we spoke to him about him staying and he stayed. And there he is again, filling holes, playing different positions. And certainly the last few games have done very well. Is, is he someone you sort of lean on as a leader in that dressing room? No, I think he just naturally gets about his business. You know, he's he's one of the he's he's got a great old school thing about him in the sense of I mean he's very modern to look after himself, but just gets out there and does it. You know, players nowadays are with fifteen rubs and fifteen of this and fifteen of that and fourteen different tie ups and fifty seven stretches just to get out there with training. Trust me, he just runs out there and goes, Come on then, let's go. It's brilliant. I love that. I I, I wish them days were back more often, but everyone needs something now. You seen some a bit softer, no, not at all. They're your words, not mine. I just said they need a lot more to get them out there to train. Some, some valid. Some routines are valid. Some I'm always wondering, really, do you really need that just to go out and train? I doubt it. And during the summer, Thomas Frank was asked uh, 
which managers he takes inspiration from past and present. You mentioned uh, Johan Cruyff and you also name checked yourself. How sort of pleased and proud does he make you of the recognition of uh, I would certainly don't think I'm up there with Johan Cruyff, um, but he's a, he's a manager I, I get on very well with personally. I like a lot of what he does. We speak, when we do get a chance to speak, we speak openly about what we see as the truth of the, rather than perception of the game and our roles and what we do. Um, likewise, I admire a lot of what he's done from his humble backgrounds in coaching to where he is now. Um, I find him very good company. I find him very informed about what the game is and, and what it what it is. And I, I think he's another one. He, he doesn't. He's not really, in my experience of him anyway, talking to me. Not really bothered about the noise. You should do this. You should do that. You should play this way. You should play that way. He always speaks to me, and we always share a view of win. You know, how do you find a way of winning? If you can do it with amazing football, great. But if you can't, how are you going to win? And I don't think he loses sight of that, and I certainly don't. So we got on very well and have a lot of respect for him as a person and as a, as a football manager. Do you think he's, he's, he got, he's got what it takes to take a step up to the maybe what bigger? Well, we'll see. I mean, you know, there's so many managers out there now linked with jobs, but he certainly has been, and, and rightly so. Um, it'd be good to see if it does happen. I'd be the first con to congratulate him, but let's not show any disrespect to the club he's at. You know, they've been amazing for him as much as he has for them. And the job that Brentford have done in getting to where they've got to, sometimes it's forgotten. You know, a lot of people there, Matt Benham included, have done a lot of work there to get it to where he's got to, and Thomas has played his part within all of that, no, no doubt about it. And as someone uh, you get on with so much, uh, does it make it more difficult game or just stand business as usual? With who, sorry? With Thomas. Oh, no, I'm not bothered by that. He wants to win. I want to win. End of. Thanks, Shireen. We'll go to Julia. <coughs> um, you mentioned there about building resilience. So if you look at the season so far, it was four defeats and then four games without a defeat. And, you know, since you've been here, you and the players have probably had to work on resilience given lots of things that have gone on, a lot of it out of your control. After those four defeats, and everyone, we're all asking you about it, asking you about stats... Did you have to draw on that resilience? Is that a point where you, you did a reset? No, not really. I think it's not just resilience, it's reality. You know, the thing is, with your role as a manager, especially after my years of doing it, you, you learn about the realities and sometimes the outside perception is not the reality and you know what really is. And So you've got to manage that yourself wisely, you know, because the outside noise can get very powerful nowadays. Um, but you've got to see through all that, as I call it, and, and look into what the truth of the story is. And I know the truth from inside. I know some of the challenges you have with players, players' fitness, players' form, some personal things as well. You know, you've got to remember there's, they're, they're people. You know, people are saying, well, they get paid a lot of money, I hear that all the time, why don't they just get on with it? It's not as simple as that. They're still people, they still have lives. So there's a lot going on behind what the perception is. So you're managing that, but never losing sight of the fact that no one cares. You know, the job is get them to win. That's it. I've never lost sight of that. So when it goes against you, I understand it. I understand some of the questions, I understand the noise, I understand the negativity that builds quickly. But that's part of the job. You know, if you're not on that, don't do it. Because, you know, I, I warn all the young managers when they come into it, if, if they choose to speak to me. I said, be ready for when it's not so good. Everyone can handle the winning. Everyone can handle that bit. But can you handle the winning when you're not winning? That's the, the truth, that really, in the longer run, that is. Can I just check, is Jared Brandwaite in contention for this one? And also, there's yeah, been... he's, he's, he's played, he's trained all week. We made a call. I made a call, actually, on it last week. Decided not to go with him being fit, even for the squad. Because I think it was important for him to have a week's training, a clear week's training, which he has done. So, yes, he'd certainly be a part of the squad. So, with that, th there are reports about James Tarkovsky having a bit of a back problem maybe this season. Could you could you rotate your centre-backs now? You've got almost a luxury of, of having some more available. Four very good centre-backs all fighting for the shirt. That will look after itself. OK. <laughs> Uh, Beto hasn't featured in the last four Premier League games. What more does he have to show you that he could either come off Just the bench and take effect? Just to learn. You know, Dom's a very good player. We know that. And I think he's active and he's looking active. He's looking bright. I know a couple of the chances hasn't gone in, but he's getting great chances and great moments in games. Um, you know, Beto has to keep working at his game. And Michael Keane, um, I saw some quotes from him talking about, you know, he's, I know a lot of people say he's he's got a fantastic strike on him. And we've seen evidence of that. We saw it at the weekend again. Is it, given you've known him a long time, I know he said he wasn't massively keen on becoming a striker. Did you ever have that conversation with him? And have, have you had it in more recent times about moving him about? Well, we threw him on um, last season. No, the season before. You know, we threw him on up front a few times just to try and disturb the game a little bit. But we know if it lands in the box, he's a calmer finisher as I've seen. Um, and I think he's one of them he enjoys scoring a goal. 
you know, he didn't look nervous in front of goal. He just looks as calm as you like, as calm as a person he often is, actually. And so it's a great skill to have. So we know he's a threat. At my previous club, he was a threat from set pieces. We know since I've been here, he's been a threat from set, set pieces. Smashed in against Tottenham, wasn't it? Um, yeah, smashing him from there, and you think, yeah, it doesn't surprise me. And they finished the other day, didn't surprise me. His calmness on the other hand at Burnley last season, misses the first one, slots the second, you know. It's a good weapon to have in the box, but he's certainly a figure I think can get more goals when he's playing, of course. Thank you. Thanks, Julia. Well Just to clarify, is Jesper, is he back as well, Jesper Lindstrom? Yeah, yeah, he's over his illness, yeah. Just knocked him knocked him back for a few days. Just on uh, Brozier, yeah. obviously he's had this Achilles issue he's arrived with. It runs 21's minutes going to be important for him. When do you think he maybe might be able to get Certainly not for a couple of weeks yet, I don't think. Um, but he's going along very well and he's strong. He looks strong in his running. Uh, but he needs a training period now to get him to the point of games. What do you think he'll give you? Because it did come as a little bit of a surprise when he arrived on, on deadline. Yeah, I mean, we don't know until we really know him, you know, because we haven't seen him. Well, you know, we've seen him running around, but not not in a um, football capacity and not in a, a way that you can really tell. I know a bit about his past, obviously, played against him, seen him play. Um, but I think he looks to me, or what I've seen of him before when he's played against him, an all-round striker. You know, he's got... He's a big, big fella. He's got a good movement. He's got, he's got probably better pace than people think, and he's certainly fit by the looks of things, as in looking after himself. I want him to come and, and, and enjoy what it is to, to wear the shirt, but he's got to earn it first, and he'll be well aware of that. Just Alex Awolby's coming back a player that you sold because of. So that again. Alex Awolby's coming yes. back a form. At the time, you said you didn't particularly want to sell him, but it made sense for the deal. Yeah, it was, it was a very good deal for the club. Um, I thought it was an excellent service in, uh, serving in my time here. Enjoyed having him around the place. I thought it was a joy to work with. Um, a very good player, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, not one that I wanted to lose, but needs must at that time. And it was a good fee for a good player. Just on the grander scheme, you have had to do, and the club have had to do that, sell players to, to help with the financial situation. Is there a light at the end of the tunnel? Do you see that coming towards an end, especially with the team? Not at the moment, but obviously we don't know what's going to happen if, if this takeover goes through. So we're waiting on news of that. But at the moment, it's still, as you can. Well, I would imagine that you can see we've had to still cut costs and keep you know fees low, bring in more than we're putting out and that sort of thing. So we'll have to wait and see on that. And just finally, a few fans noticed um, Dominic at the end of the episode game. He sort of <coughs> looked like he went straight down the tunnel. Was that just because he was frustrated? He missed a couple of chances, do you think? And I don't know. I, was, I just gave the fans a clap and walked off as I normally do. So I'm not sure about that. But I certainly didn't know anything any different than him just getting on with what he does. I didn't notice whether he went over or not, to be honest.